Well, ladies and gentlemen, joining us for the third, I think you're a third timer. Three timer. You're a three timer. Mr. Kevin Nealon, a big, big movie star Thank in the studio right. with us. Three timer is better than a two timer. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. What an honor, huh? Oh, my God. That's uh, so and, great. And as a matter of fact, before we even start, uh, just to set the tone for, for our little chat today, yeah. uh, as a third timer, you get an official Riz Show third timers certificate. Wow. Oh, my. Oh, I love. Thank you so much. This is really the first time I've won anything. It's well, you can time. put that. You can put that right next to your second timers that we gave you. I love that. I love time. that. That one came with a frame. <laughs> it, yes, it, it has frame. no frame on it. Uh, we lost the frame. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we lost that great. in the flood. Yeah, in yeah. the great, yeah, the great St. Louis flood of of three one four of twenty four of twenty twenty three. It yeah. happened yesterday. You know where I live, they change uh, area codes sometimes. And I think we have like six or seven area codes in Los Angeles. So if if three one four was one of them. And then they changed it to 213, then 314 would have less celebration, wouldn't it? Yeah, so we got, so yesterday was 314 day here. Yeah. Uh, which is a big, you know, it's pie day for you nerds out there, but it's also, <laughs> you know, it's 314 day, St. Louis day. Okay. Uh, and there were mass celebrations around the city, meant much celebratory gunfire, as we do here. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> But be, yeah. Well, we got a couple different zip codes, though. We got 314 and we got 636, oh. which is a lot west. Yeah. They were not allowed to celebrate yesterday. Oh. <laughs> Could they come to the 314? No. No, they, no, they, they stand, stand on the riverbanks. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, that's they, amazing. They take it very, very serious. Yeah. I, you know, it's interesting, too. The 314 is back to back with St. Patty's Day. That's Sunday. Sort of, yeah. I mean, yeah. within a few days. It's a fun week. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of, they stock up a lot in the bars that uh, mm -hmm. this week, this past week. You came at the right time. Well, yeah, and you are, sure. you were born in St. Louis. I was born here, yeah. Really? Incarnate Word Hospital on Grand Street. You're saying, uh, SLU. My father went to SLU, uh, aeronautical engineer. And he graduated um, three weeks after I was born. So they grabbed me, they put me in the car, and we moved to Connecticut. He had a job there. But I have fond memories from that time. It was, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was so great. That pass I was sucking on that uh, pacifier yeah. so hard. Yeah. <laughs> but it's fine, I, I tell you what, though. St. Louis does claim you as... Yeah, I was going to say, as long yeah, as we can... That. As its own. As long as we can claim you. Yeah. That's, but, it, that's I mean, it is about. true. I was born here. I was born in St. Louis. Do you do, do you have a star on the on the Walk of Fame? I better. In St. Louis? He <laughs> should. You should. should. Me and uh, John, John Goodman? Goodman? Yeah, John Goodman. Um, Chuck Berry? Yes. Was he from here, right? Yes. Of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's there's a whole... The, oh, the, Winston the, Churchill. The, no? No, okay. <laughs> no. Bad. okay I would believe bad. it. <laughs> no. With the accent and everything. With yeah. the accent. You'd think. Well. That's a St. Louis accent. <laughs> no, there... I mean, I don't know if you've been down to, you know, the Del Mar Loop, there's, you know, there's a, a street with all the famous St. Louis people and their stars, and I believe Kevin Nealon is famous enough to have a star. We'll work on that. Yeah. Well, to be honest with you, in my suitcase, I carry five stars with me. So if I go to a city and they don't have my star on the sidewalk, I will have them put it in. <laughs> Seriously, it's a beautiful gold star. I don't know what colors these are down here. They're bronze. Bronze? They're bronze. Okay, mine will look bronze after a couple of years. And um, it's really flattering. It really is. <laughs> what does it take to get a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame? It's like $10,000. Is that what it is? Is yeah. it $10,000? $10,000. And then there's a yearly, isn't there? Isn't oh, like a maintenance I didn't know about fee. that. I, think, I thought there was a maintenance fee. Oh, you have to pay for it? Uh, yeah. Oh, time? yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, that's nice. I didn't know that. Neither did I. Uh, you know, sometimes I go to a hotel, often, and they have a resort fee or something like that, hotel fee. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I asked somebody, they said, what is the hotel, what is that for the resort fee? Oh, that's for um, our pool. That's for, um, you know, trips into town on the shuttle. I said, well, I'm only here overnight. Do I have to pay that uh, resort fee because I'm not doing any of that stuff? They go, yeah, I'll waive it for you. Oh. You know. No if kidding. If you ask, they'll take it off? Well, in this one particular hotel, the guy did. Yeah. Wow, I'm going to try that. And really, I was staying there for a week, and I was doing everything. Is that a La Quinta? <laughs> Is that a La Quinta? No, it wasn't a La Quinta. Oh, next to dinner. So, you're in the water slide. <laughs> and that guy's got his hands on his hips. So. Yeah. I'm exactly. in here for free. Yeah. <laughs> got ya. <laughs> oh, man. I did park in a, uh, in a store the other day. I had to go to a restaurant, and it said parking for big five sports only. And uh, I couldn't find another parking spot on the street, so... I saw the people pulling in and walking different directions, so I pulled in, walked a different direction, went to the restaurant, came back out, and the car's still there, no ticket. I thought, okay, good to know for next time. Good to know. <laughs> Not going to feed any parking meter. No, you beat the system, yeah. man. But hang on to that dollar. 
You save yeah. it for my resort fee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so last time you were here, last time you heard, we talked about hiking with celebrities. Are you, are you still hiking with celebrities? Uh, I am, but it's called Hiking with Kevin. Okay. Uh, which, who, I'm a celebrity, no, so yeah. yeah. No, well, yeah. You, the, like the Hiking with Celebrities. Oh, that, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. called Hiking with Kevin. Exactly. I am still doing that. I just wrapped season four, as they say. And I've done about 120 hikes total now. And uh, this season I did uh, 32 hikes. And the last couple were really fun. They were all fun, but the last couple I did was with um, Nick Offerman mm -hmm. and Brian Cranston from uh, Breaking Bad and Jonathan Banks from Breaking Bad. I'm a big Breaking Bad yeah. fan. Yeah. Yeah, so it's been a great, uh, great run. Well, and, and it started with Matthew Modine. It did start with like Matthew Modine. Like that's your buddy, like actually hiking. Yeah, we, we were hiking. I, I hadn't seen him in a while. I said, Matt, you want to go for a hike? He goes, sure. So we're hiking, and uh, it's pretty a steep incline, and we're out of breath. And I thought, this would be funny, like an interview show for <laughs> both so out of breath. You know, so Matt, when you first came to Hollywood, did you? And then he asked me like that. And so I, you know, I taped it, and I posted it on Twitter at the time, like a two-minute little yeah. piece, and uh, people liked it. So mm. I started doing, I started calling all my celebrity friends until I ran out of them. So it's like three celebrity friends. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, and then I just started sending uh, emails to publishers saying, hey, um, would Taylor Swift want to do a hike? You know, whatever. She so far, no. Um, she wants to do it, but then I get busy. Yeah. You know yeah, I, mean? I get it. Yeah, no <laughs> I get it. I get no, <laughs> no time, Taylor. Have you done Mark Wahlberg, and was there a noticeable difference? That would be my question. Or was he ironically not out of breath when he hiked? Uh, no, I did not do him. But he probably would be a good hiker. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to do a Mark Wahlberg impression, all you have to do is just sound out of breath. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I can win it. I'm actually, I'm actually, I'm actually in really phenomenal shape. And it's just, this is... Or he would be, like, completely... When he is out of breath, he... Yeah, totally stoic. It's me, Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> He's at the top of the mountain going, Kevin. Let's go, man. I'm having altitude sickness. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, you guys are big Wahlberg fans. Yeah. We love yeah. Mark Wahlberg on this yeah. show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's got yeah. a star at the St. Louis Hall of Fame. Yeah. Does Do you, he really? I know. Mark Mark Wal he Do you know Mark Wahlberg has three nipples? No. Um, I didn't know this either until this Shh. year. There's your first question. Pocket, There's your first question for the Kevin hike. Nealon. Which one of the two real ones? The two up top. Or, or the two up the top. Two up top. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the other one? Ladies and gentlemen, joining us for the third, I think you're a third timer. Three timer. You're a three timer, Mr. Kevin Nealon, a big, big movie star in the studio with us. Three timer is better than a two timer. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. What an honor, huh? Oh my God, that's uh, so and, great. And as a matter of fact, before we even start, uh, just to set the tone for for our little chat today, yeah. uh, as a third timer, you get an official Riz Show third timers certificate. Wow! Oh my! Oh, God, I love. Thank you so much. This is really the first time I've won anything. It's well, you can time. put that. You can put that right next to your second timers that we gave you. I you love that. The I love time. that. That one came with a frame. <laughs> it, yes, it it has no frame on it. Uh, we lost the frame. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we lost that great. in the flood. Yeah, in yeah. the great, yeah, the great St. Louis flood of of three one four of twenty twenty four of twenty twenty three. It happened, yeah. it happened yesterday. You know where I live? They change uh, area codes sometimes. And I think we have like six or seven area codes in Los Angeles. So if if three one four was one of them. And then they changed it to 213, then 314 would have less celebration, wouldn't it? Yeah, so we got, so yesterday was 314 day here. Yeah. Uh, which is a big, you know, it's pie day for you nerds out there, but it's also, <laughs> you know, it's 314 day, St. Louis day. Okay. Uh, and there were mass celebrations around the city, meant much celebratory gunfire, as we do here. <laughs> <laughs> Be, yeah. Well, we got a couple different zip codes, though. We got 314 and we got 636, oh. which is a lot west. Yeah. They were not allowed to celebrate yesterday. Oh. <laughs> Could they come to the 314? No. No, they, no, they, they stand on the riverbanks. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, that's they, amazing. They take it very, very serious. Yeah. I, you know, it's interesting, too. The 314 is back-to-back -back with St. Patty's Day. That's Sunday. Sort of, yeah. I mean, yeah. within a few days. It's a fun week. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of... They stock up a lot in the bars that uh, mm -hmm. this week, this past week. You came at the right time. Well, yeah, and you, are, sure. you were born in St. Louis. I was born here, yeah. Really? Incarnate Word Hospital on Grant Street. You're saying uh, SLU. My father went to SLU, uh, aeronautical engineer. And he graduated um, three weeks after I was born. So they grabbed me, they put me in the car, and we moved to Connecticut. He had a job there. But I have fond memories from that time. <laughs> it, was, uh, yeah, it was so great. That pass I was sucking on that pacifier uh, yeah. so hard. Man. <laughs> but fine, I, man. I tell you what, though. St. Louis does claim you as its own. As long as we can claim you. Yeah. But it, I mean, it is true. I was born here. 
I was born in St. Louis. Do you do, do you have a star on the on the Walk of Fame? I better in St. Louis. He should. <laughs> he I should. should. Me and uh, John, John Goodman. Goodman. Yeah, John Goodman. Um, Chuck Berry. Yes. Was he from here? Right. Yes. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's there's a whole. The, oh, the, Winston Churchill. The, no, <laughs> no, okay, no. Okay, I would believe bad. it. Mm, no. <laughs> with the accent of, and everything, with bad. the accent, you think? Uh, well, that's a St. Louis accent. <laughs> no, there. I mean, I don't know if you've been down to you know the Del Mar Loop. There's you know there's a, a street with all the famous St. Louis people and their stars. And I believe Kevin Nealon is famous enough to have a star. We'll work on that. Yeah. Well, to be honest with you, in my suitcase, I carry five stars with me. So if I go to a city and they don't have my star on the sidewalk, I will have them put it in. <laughs> Seriously, it's a beautiful gold star. I don't know what colors these are down here. They're bronze. Bronze? They're bronze. Okay, mine will look bronze after a couple of years. And um, it's really flattering. It really is. <laughs> what does it take to get a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame? It's like $10,000. Is that what it is? Is yeah. it $10,000? 10000 And then there's a yearly, isn't there? Uh, oh, like a maintenance I didn't know about fee. that. I, think, I thought there was a maintenance fee. Oh, you have to pay for it? Uh, yeah. For oh, time? yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, that's nice. I didn't know that. Neither did I. Uh, you know, sometimes I go to a hotel, often, and they have a resort fee or something like that, hotel fee. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I asked somebody, they said, what is the hotel, what is that for the resort fee? Oh, that's for um, our pool. That's for, um, you know, trips into town on the shuttle. I said, well, I'm only here overnight. Do I have to pay that uh, resort fee because I'm not doing any of that stuff? They go, yeah, I'll waive it for you. Oh. You know. No if kidding. If you ask, they'll take it off? Well, in this one particular hotel, the guy did. Yeah. Wow, I'm going to try that. And really, I was staying there for a week, and I was doing everything. Is that a La Quinta? <laughs> Is that a La Quinta? No, it wasn't a La Quinta. <laughs> oh, next to dinner. <laughs> You're in the water slide. <laughs> that guy's got his hands on his hips. Like, yeah. I'm exactly. in here for free. <laughs> 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 got ya. <laughs> oh, man. I did park in a, uh, in a store the other day. I had to go to a restaurant, and it said parking for big five sports only. And uh, I couldn't find another parking spot on the street, so... I saw the people pulling in and walking in different directions, so I pulled in, walked a different direction, went to the restaurant, came back out, and the car's still there, no ticket. I thought, okay, good to know for next time. Good to know. <laughs> Not going to feed any parking meter. No, mm -hmm. you beat the system, yeah. man. But hang on to that dollar. You save it for my resort fee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so last time you were here, last time you heard, we talked about hiking with celebrities. Are you, are you still hiking with celebrities? Uh, I am, but it's called Hiking with Kevin. Okay. Uh, which, who, I'm a celebrity. No, so, yeah, it's, yeah. no well, yeah. you, the, like the hiking with celebrities. Oh, that, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. called hiking with Kevin. Exactly. I am still doing that. I just wrapped season four, as they say. And I've done about 120 hikes total now. And uh, this season I did uh, 32 hikes. And the last couple were really fun. They were all fun. But the last couple I did was with um, Nick Offerman mm -hmm. and Brian Cranston from uh, Breaking Bad. And Jonathan Banks from Breaking Bad. I'm a big Breaking Bad yeah. fan. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been a great, uh, great run. Well, and, and it started with Matthew Modine. It did start with like Matthew Modine. That's your buddy, like actually hiking. Yeah, we, we were hiking. I, I hadn't seen him in a while. I said, Matt, you want to go for a hike? He goes, sure. So we're hiking, and uh, it's pretty a steep incline, and we're out of breath. And I thought, this would be funny, like an interview show for <laughs> both so out of breath. You know, so Matt, when you first came to Hollywood did you and then he asked me like that and so I you know I taped it and I posted it on Twitter at the time like a two minute little yeah. piece and uh, people liked it so mm. I started doing I started calling all my celebrity friends until I ran out of them so it's like three celebrity friends yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah. you know and then I just started sending uh, emails to publishers saying hey um, would Taylor Swift want to do a, you know whatever so far no um she wants to do it, but then I get busy. Yeah. You know yeah, I, mean? I get it. Yeah, no I get it. I got no, no time, Taylor. Have you done Mark Wahlberg, and was there a noticeable difference? That would be my question. Or was he ironically not out of breath when he hiked? Uh, no, I did not do him. But he probably would be a good hiker. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to do a Mark Wahlberg impression, all you have to do is just sound out of breath. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah that's Kevin, right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm hiking with Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm actually in really phenomenal shape. <laughs> and it's just, this is... Or he would be like completely, when he is out of breath, he... Yeah, totally stoic. It's me, Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> <laughs> He's at the top of the mountain going, Kevin. Let's go, man. I'm having altitude sickness. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, you guys are big Wahlberg fans. Yeah. We yeah. love Mark Wahlberg on this yeah. show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's got yeah. a star at the St. Louis Hall of Fame. Yeah. Does he really? No, here. Mark Mark Wal Do you know Mark Wahlberg has three nipples? No. I didn't know this either until this Shh. year. There's your first question. There's your first question for the Kevin Nealon. Which one of the two real ones? 
The two up top. Or, or, the two up the top. Two up top. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the other one? It's underneath one of it's them. Under it's under his spare. left nipple. He's got a spare. The How dude's got that? a spare nipple. How do they know it's under there? You could see it. You can see through I'll the top nipple? What the hell are no, you talking No, no, he's got a nipple underneath the other. Oh, underneath. Underneath. So I thought you Not meant behind. layered. Not behind. Yeah. I thought you meant layered. Not behind. I thought he had okay. a spare <laughs> nipple. He's like below. a spare nipple and below. A nipple oh, I see, right below. And they're miniature. Have you ever seen mm -hmm. a third nipple on somebody? I got a friend with it. <laughs> no, I've touch. seen a guy with a tail, though. Oh, wow. Oh, there it is, Kevin. That. That's his third nip. Oh, that's sexy. <laughs> Let me see that. He can nurse three babies at once. That's right. You know somebody with a tail? Areola. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have an areola. Hmm. Um, yeah, he had a tail. This guy I worked with, uh, my first job was dishwasher. And we used to change those white, you know, the white um, those outfits they gave you, uniforms, because mm -hmm. you get so dirty working in the kitchen and washing dishes and trash and all that. And we had a locker room where you change out of those clothes, put your other clothes back on, and he's changing once. And uh, I always try to look, you know, when guys are changing, you know what I mean? <laughs> Of course. <laughs> and, uh, what? Just to see, just to see if they have tails. <laughs> cool, yeah. yeah, I'm looking for tails, man. I'm trying to get some tails. tails. <laughs> looking for tails. And yeah, he turned around and he had a tail. It wasn't a long tail. It was like a Doberman pincher. You know, after they like clipped the tail. Oh, yeah, he's like been docked. Yeah. yeah, but I guess some people have that. It's the extension of the, they have an extra, I don't know. Vertebrae or? Disc or something. Yeah. So it goes just, just above their crack a little bit. But you could grab onto it. Whoa, it's wild. I found out. Yeah, you could grab you onto it and onto swing around. Yeah. Butt crack tail? Every time I took out a newspaper and folded it up, you got really nervous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got excited and started waving. You always knew when it was quitting wagon. time. Do yeah. <laughs> you know who has webbed toes? Who? Dan Aykroyd. <gasps> For real? Yeah. Really? Like yeah. pronounced webbed? webbed? I think so. Yeah. I've never Can seen this Can he spread thing. his toes very far? Nobody's a good swimmer. I was going to say, yeah. he's had to yeah. have won some. High school medals. Way to go. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of, like, celebrities out there that have kind of odd, um, you know, things happening with them. I'll tell you what, man. If I was walking around this planet with web feet, I'd probably believe in some of the stuff that Ackroy believes in, too. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably you, you right. You know what I mean? I'd be yeah. like, I ain't from here. Yeah. <laughs> somebody, somebody dropped me off yeah, <laughs> on may, this yeah, planet. Yeah, he may actually be th yeah, thinking he's from another planet. Well, uh, wouldn't you? If you're walking around with a kid with, with yeah. duck feet... I would definitely think something is up. Something I am special. Uh, there's something you got to be on the swim team, though. Oh yeah, oh you, you got to be. be. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's got to be. It's, those are all. Would you call those um, physical abnormalities? Abnormalities, like handicap kind of stuff. No or? way. Advancements. Physical advancements. Physical yes. advancements. Mutation. Bodily yeah. attributes. Yeah. You know how they say uh, if you have any, uh, if you need uh, assistance getting on a plane, uh, they board you first. Yeah. I had knee surgery a while ago, and I had a cane, and Man. It was so great because they would put you on that plane right away. They give you all the time you want. And I started thinking, well, I started thinking, maybe I should just bring this cane with me always. Yeah. You know, even I when would. I'm healed. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I was thinking about a wheelchair. That could be too cumbersome. You know what I mean? Did you have a handicap placard in your car? I should have got Dude, one of those. I should have. They should have offered it. Yeah. Um, Do that Lori Laughlin uh, gal and curb your enthusiasm in the, in the new. In the new, I haven't seen the new episode. On the new season, like that's what she does. She takes advantage of every one of them. She's got the blue flag on her uh, golf cart thing. She's got the placard, the handicap placard on her, that's on her funny. car. I heard she's really leaning into Leans the, in like, hard, leaning into dude. the uh, admission scandal. Ta thing. Yes, yeah. taking advantage her. of everything. It's a it's yeah, a great Becky. it's a great scene. That's the that way they can't make fun of you because you're making fun of yourself. Yep, yep, she is right even with when All Michael in. Richards was on Curb. Oh, was he on? I didn't you, see that one. You were on Curb. I was on. And you I haven't was? seen all the episodes? <laughs> I haven't seen all the episodes. No. My friend Cheryl Hines is on that show. They did the Seinfeld reunion. She's great. And they really did did lean into the Kramer issue, Michael no Richards way. issue. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's wild. You remember that, Rafe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, vaguely, but yes. It was on Curb. Yeah. They did the Seinfeld thing on Curb. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, he hasn't worked uh, in a long time since then, right? Mm -hmm. No, but he's got that Seinfeld money. He don't need to work. Yeah, that's true. That's true. All you have to do is get a good hobby. <laughs> you got any hobbies? No. He doesn't. Do you know what I just started doing as a hobby? I'm learning how to uh, tie ropes, rope knots. Mm. Because my like father... Like a Boy Scout? Yeah. Like a sailor. You know how to tie like a bow, uh, <laughs> like a bow line? I'm turning... I'm, I'm learning how to do that right now. Cinch knots and, you know, cliff... Uh, my father used to tie the luggage on a roof of the car, and he had the cinch knots and everything. I think, wow, this guy... He knows what he's doing, you know. And um, and just like a year ago, I got some books on tying rope knots. How exciting. Do you know? <laughs> no, it is. It soon is great. The show, soon the show is going to be repelling yeah. with Kevin Neal. <laughs> but when I'm on a plane, Escaped. you know when I take out like eight feet of rope, 
people get concerned. Sure. They see a piece of rope. <laughs> this guy is you know on I mean? an airplane that just boarded uh, in front of everybody with a cane. It's, I get the rope out. out. It's I'm, like I'm, male I'm, knitting, really. It is that it is? It is, you. actually. I practice. I'm looking for a post. So I usually do it around the neck of the person in front of me. Yes. You know, I just tie Try it, and get out of it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's one of my hobbies. Damn. Well, the luggage thing's important, man. Nothing makes a dad... It excites the dad and everyone. And oh, a good pack. A good, a good pack. car pack? When yeah. You hope. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's brother. A, yeah, I'm a good car pack. You get, you give me like 12 bags, I'll get them all in the trunk. Oh, yeah. I'll make the use of... Is that Adam, oh, is that Adam calling? Sandler calling you? Is the payphone <laughs> going off? Hey, listen, I got a... Yeah, so I, that should have been... I got a Happy Madison production for you. This is not my phone. Bring your friends. Pick this up from somebody. It's actually his rope dealer. I don't know how. It says rope Stop dealer. About yeah. the rope. Yeah. Yeah. We got new rope. In. Hey man, drop my company. <laughs> Just drop it. But this, I, I, I got all kinds of ropes. Um, I got nylon. I got twine. You know, I got it all. That is yeah. so hot. Dude, this that. is cool. Man. Hemp rope. I got Hemp all rope. sorts. Of um, okay, so so during the writer strike, so I, I did read that you like started taking Spanish. Yeah. So during the writer's strike, when you had nothing to do, you started taking Spanish classes via Zoom with a language guy in, in Mexico City. A language City. gal in Mexico City, yeah. Alma. Uh, you started learning piano. Yeah. Uh, banjo. Well, I've always known how to play the banjo. Oh, you were always a banjo guy? But I started playing more of these instruments, guitar and banjo. So do you and Steve Martin jam? We have. You have? That's so we cool. Have. That's yeah. rad. Is that anywhere while. we could find online? Well, um, we are um, one episode of Weeds. We play the theme song together. Duh. You might, you might be able to dig it up here. But um yeah, so we played the we played the band. He's so much better than me though. I mean, I, I get tired after three songs of bluegrass. I'm like, oh enough already. So Lauren, show him that picture that you were getting excited about yesterday. Oh, of Steve Martin back in the day. Steve Turquoise Martin. Steve. Like Steve Martin back in the was He was on the dating Sunday? game. Steve Martin was? Yeah. Oh, and I was it. too. You were? Yeah. I won the date. This I was picture three. of Steve Martin is just so oh, gorgeous. Yeah. Look at that necklace, and he's holding and, a banjo. And he's holding the banjo. Oh, you see the color version. Ugh. A lot of turquoise. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That's salt, you, pepper, he, and turquoise. He used to open up for a nitty-gritty dirt band. Yeah. Really? Back then. So that was his hippie days. Oh, here's all right. Here's Kevin Nealon and uh, Steve Martin doing the theme to Weeds. There you go. Little boxes oh. on the hillside. Little, little boxes made of ticky-tacky. <laughs> little boxes. Both you guys? Yeah. So the banjo is nothing new for you. It says here that no. you started it like during the deliverance yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, people ask me what made me want to take out the banjo, and I, I had been playing the guitar, and I saw that movie Deliverance, and they start laughing, but it was really true. When that scene came on, when the, they was playing the banjo on the porch, yeah. and they were playing the guitar, it really got me going and moving me. I thought, that is amazing, that, that weird-looking kid playing the banjo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that uh, got you inspired? I well, I mean, if he do, could you do, know, it. do you know how that scene was shot? No. This kid was real, of course. He wasn't yeah. an actor, mm -hmm. and he had, uh, you know, he was mentally handicapped, and they, he didn't play the banjo, so they put a banjo on his lap, and they hit his arm behind his back, <clears throat> and another banjo player put his hands through the wall. No way. And was what? Doing the, playing the banjo. Whoa. That's what that I heard. That's so cool. Hmm. Now, maybe if I go back and look at it. Look at that. I thought he was on a swing. I got to go back and look at that. He was on the porch. Maybe he was a very small banjo player behind him. Yeah, was, it, was he in a rocking chair? If I, <laughs> maybe he was in a rocking chair. If I, if I recall, dude, that's, when was the last time you saw that movie? Uh, not too dude. long ago. I went on a whitewater rafting trip in Georgia, and yeah. that was a... Uh, Were you compromised? No, but they, they advertised... The guide talked about it a lot. He go, the advertisement was, The River from Deliverance. And I was <laughs> oh, yeah. like, yeah, I don't know if that's a good selling point. Like, 
I don't think anybody remembers the intense rafting scene no. from Deliverance, you know. But it was they were really they leaned in hard. The river, uh, like the love scene from Deliverance, happened right up here <laughs> in this woods, and I was like, "This is weird." Okay, so the scene just shows his face. And yeah, his, you might be right. And then his hand. So, yeah, that's probably a fake hand. But see, he's not playing it though. Did you see the documentary on Burt Reynolds? Oh, okay. no. Oh, it's so good. It's, good. it's so good. He just could not keep his money. He would just. He had like 15 ex wives. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at this. You, uh, you can. Now that. Now Those I won't be able arms? to unsee this. Yeah, you can tell because it just shows him. Well, well, I don't know how they swinging. had somebody's hand coming through the wall. No, because his head looks like it's behind the swing. Oh, right here. Yeah, like he's sitting behind it, right? Wow. Yeah, he's not playing it. Dude, Deliverance. Have you have wow. you seen the whole movie? Uh, yeah, it's, it's been it's been too many years. I've never Learn, have you seen it? it? No. That's on. The, that's put that on the list. It's good. That is intense. Yeah. It's intense. Watch that after Deer Hunter. <laughs> yeah, I got so many man movies uh, yeah. lined up that I gotta watch. <laughs> oh make, a, make a night of it. Yeah, I just yeah. fun one. I just watched uh, Poor Things on the plane yesterday. Oh, that I'm gonna watch that tonight. Crazy. I'm watching that tonight. That is sick. This, this, <laughs> it's uh, crazy. Is it good? Is it's it worth, really is it worth good. a watch? Good. Am yeah. I going to be depressed after watching it? No. Okay. Good. No. Is it funny? It is. Uh, it does have funny parts to it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. It's just. It's just so weird. It's just. I can't even explain it. It's a little bit like Frankenstein. You're right. It's, That's what the trailer looks like. Yeah. It's a little bit of like Big. You know when he? Uh, well, actually, it's the reverse of Big. I don't want to give it away. All right. Well, yeah, she she the, the, the snaps is like she she dies and then she's brought back to life. It's like The Exorcist, you know. It's like uh, it's like um, it's like The Little Mermaid. It's like, um, <laughs> all right. It's like all right. It's a wonderful life. Like Shank, Super Shank. Mario Shank. Brothers. So we yeah. had we had uh, earlier in our you know celebrity news segment uh, the, a list of the uh, the best Kevin Nealon roles, mm -hmm. uh, TV and. Movies. A top nine. A did top it say nine. I was the most underrated? Actor? On your own list? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it did. No, what do you think was listed as your number one movie? Mo in movie or TV role? Just character, yeah. Character. Oh, character. Doug Wilson. Weeds? No. Mm -mm. No? That was three. I think. Um, that was, was it, number two. That was, two. was it drunk two. number two from Roxanne? <laughs> no, no. Oh, you were from Roxanne? Yeah, yeah. Dang. I was in the beginning. Dude, no, nobody knows that movie. Drunk number two. Cyrano de Bergerac, dude. Yeah. Dude, that's a great movie. That's it like was great. A lot of comics were Highly there. underrated Steve Martin movie. Yeah. Very much so. And the guy that played Slider in Navy Seals. Was that Daryl Hannah? Waiting for that guy Darryl to Hannah. take off. <laughs> yeah. Daryl Hannah. That was great. We I was up in uh, British Columbia at this ski resort town in the middle of nowhere in the summer. And they're waiting for the right... I was in the beginning of the movie with a ski pole. I was dueling with Steve Martin. He mm -hmm. had a tennis racket. And it was me and Rich Scheidner, this other comic. We waited for three weeks to do that scene because of weather or whatever the timing was with the show, and we just rented bikes. We had such a blast up there. I'll always remember that. That was cool. No, but that was that was not listed as your number one. Okay. So, in, include SNL in it too. Okay. Uh, was it Mr. Subliminal? Nope. Was that it was number five? That was number five. Oh. <laughs> uh, God, I don't know. It's Franz. Oh, I was going to say Hans and Franz. Franz yeah. is your number one, according to this, whoever made this list. That's yeah. sad. That's How is so that sad? sad? <laughs> yeah, because it's not me. It's a character. Yeah, but you're playing the character. I mean, you do such a great job at it. And, and, and I did encourage everybody earlier to go listen to the Conan O'Brien podcast where you and Dana Carvey do yeah. read the movie. Right. You right. were number two. <laughs> was, weekend update host. Oh, yeah. oh, really? So Kevin Nealon no. was number two. Yeah. And also yourself in Curb, too. So you're on the list twice. You made yourself as yourself twice. In this Larry list. Sanders. You ever see that one? I have. Larry Sanders. That didn't make the list. Yeah. It's just top nine. It's just top nine. It was just did. top nine. Not even, a, you didn't get a top ten. You got a top nine. A top Sorry, nine man. list. I'll take it, man. I'll <laughs> take Number it. ten is your next one. It will be. I have three films that are coming out, and I only know the name of this one, Mermaid. It's called Mermaid. We shot in Florida. It's a thriller. The Mermaid is kind of like a killer. It's a, it's a, it's a horror film. Oh. And she kind of looks like an alien in the face, and she just comes up on boats and kills people. Oh, that's oh, it. And, sweet. Uh, it's got a little bit of an ET thing going on there too, because they take her and you know the guy keeps her drugged up and brings her to parties and stuff. All right, Whoa. so that uplifter's coming up. Uh, what else? E. There's e. another Jones. one, and I'm trying to remember the name of this one. Inhabitants. Inhabitants. That's it. Yeah. yeah, that's another horror film, I think. 
You got I two got, horror movies uh, in there? I in think it is, yeah. And I did another one, I think, but I can't, I have no recollection. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not good. Yeah, I, you know, it's a little indie film. I think they bring me in for a couple of scenes, you know, and then I'm out of there. Yeah. Uh, there was one called Grand Rapids that I never saw. Uh, I used to do these uh, indie films when I was starting out because, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're easier to get in a role because they were very low budget. And I, I would do them because I think this is the director's first time. He could become a very big director. Sure. You know, he maybe he's really good. And you know what? Never happens. <laughs> uh, most of the time I never hear the film again. <laughs> So, um, but I think this mermaid one will be good, and also the Inca what's it called? Inhabitants. 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 You won, that's the one you won down in Austin Film Festival. That one. Good he knew them. that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> he knew that. Is it weird being on a horror movie set compared to a comedy movie set? What's the vibe like? Um, I think with the comedy, uh, it's it's a lot more um, present. You know, with the, with the horror movies, it's a lot of like special effects. Mm -hmm. And, you know, getting the lighting right and uh, a lot of running and screaming. <laughs> right. A lot of running and screaming, falling. <laughs> falling, getting back up again, running yeah, more. Corn syrup, you know, corn syrup blood. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, you know, when you do a Sandler movie, it's with your buddies. I'm sure. And, oh, that's I'm the sure best. Yeah, that's the best. Yeah, I did like maybe 12 Sandler films. And then uh, I, I thought, well, maybe that's enough to do. You know, I don't want to get typecast. Or, <laughs> you know, it's like the 12. silly person in What's there. What's your you favorite know? one? Favorite Sandler movie that you were on? Um, probably Happy Gilmore. Oh. Yeah, Gary Potter. That's but how that's, I. That's how I end the sports segment every time. Yeah. It's doing the bull dance, feeling the flow. Feeling the flow. That's how he out. ends every sports wow. segment. Mm -hmm. with there, was a, there, there was there was a script sent to me uh, that. Now this is when I decided I was not doing any more Sandler films. They sent me this film that he wasn't even in. He was producing. It was called um, Grandma's Boy. Oh, oh yeah. dude, and that's not on your. That's not even on the list of your top roles, oh, dude. Really? Wow. Travesty. A travesty for sure. Underrated. So I'm I'm looking, I read the script, I'm nah, okay, this is nuts. It's crass, it's sophomoric, juvenile, exactly what I don't want to do anymore. <laughs> the next day I got a call. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. But Alan's the lead. Uh, I got a call from Sandler the next day. Neil, I really hope you do this movie because, you know, if you don't do it and it's a big hit, I'll feel bad. But if it's not a big hit, no one's going to see it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, "All right, you're right. I'll do it then." You convinced me. Um, so yeah. So and it never, it didn't become a hit at the time, but then it became a cult classic. Yeah. And now everybody loves that. You know, that's one of those movies I wanted to show my son, and I forgot. I hadn't seen it in a while. Yeah. So my son's 14. Okay. Maybe 15. <laughs> I forgot how dirty it was. Oh yeah. Super dirty. And I'm like, "All right, boy, gonna watch <laughs> one of my it. favorites, Grandma's Boy," and. I'm like, oh, God, <laughs> what, have I, what have I done? It was the dirtiest one to <laughs> well, take, too. the dirtiest one. I know it, man. I'm the same way. I have a 17-year-old, and I, I wouldn't let him watch a lot of that stuff. You know, even if there was swearing, and I go, I cringe. I go, oh, you didn't hear that. You didn't hear that. I did Weeds for eight years. Never let my parents watch it. Oh, you never let your parents they watch never it? never saw it. They never saw it. And now I kind of regret that. But there was a lot of harsh scenes in there. Yeah. You know, with me especially. And so, I don't know. I didn't want them to look at me in a different light. Mm. Listen, even Kevin Nealon didn't want to make his parents feel uncomfortable around him. That's no, that's true. And yet, it happened several times. Well, one time especially, I was on SNL, and they were sitting right in the front row, and I was in a sketch called The Narcoleptic uh, Stripper. <laughs> so I had to, I had these cutoff shorts on and a tank top and a, a mullet wig and I had with a headband, and I had to dance right in front of them, like, you know, sticking oh my, my yeah, yeah, thrusting yeah. and stuff. I was so humiliated and scared. <laughs> <laughs> and aroused. But you know what? I got $5 in tips from them. That's yeah. nice. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Nice. That's nice. Now, Learn wanted to know about your little Nikki role uh, with the boobs I, on your head. I love little Nikki so much. The soundtrack to that movie is incredible, and I absolutely love that you had breasts on your head. So whose idea was that? Oh, that was Sandler's idea, and a buddy he wrote it with, Tim Hurley. He, you know, the funny thing about that movie is, um, I think it was that movie. Sandler calls me and goes, "Hey, Neil, you want to go down to this uh, this um, this resort down by San Diego? It's you know, it's to get you in shape and stuff." Because he was, had the movie come up, you want to get in shape, and you know, it's um, it kind of it's not a fat farm, but it's you know, they serve you good <laughs> meals and stuff, right. and you know, you exercise, you get up at five, you hike. I said, sure, <laughs> let's do it. Fat farm. <laughs> <laughs> so we drive down there. He's driving, and we stop in uh, Ocean Side or Ocean City, whatever the one is on the uh, West Coast, 
and we have this meal. He has the biggest meal I've ever seen because he realizes it'll be his last <laughs> yeah, meal yeah, yeah. before he goes in there. And, uh, and then the whole time he's in his room looking at costumes and, you know, doing production stuff. And, uh, and I went out and did the exercise. I think I lost 10 pounds. Oh, nice. But, um, yeah, so little Nicky was, uh, I think the big controversy was that is the voice he did. In it, you know, talking yeah. the way he did. Right. And mm -hmm. the, I don't think the um, the company wanted him to do that voice, the, the production company. I mean, the studio. But anyway, it was, he, like, it was like this. Yeah, talking yeah. outside of his like getting the flash. It was so cute. Yeah, I, I mean, I, th I thought it worked great. And so I played Tidhead, the gatekeeper of hell. Yeah. And I had these two breasts. <laughs> they, I'm telling you, right? The breasts looked so real. They, they did. did, dude. They did. And they felt real, too, I would imagine. <laughs> and so um, everybody. On the on the crew, they wanted to feel my breasts because they had water balloons in them yeah, and they yeah. jiggled, you know. And there would be a line sometimes. People wanted to just feel. And often I'd have to say, excuse me, my eyes are down here. Okay? Right, yeah. <laughs> my eyes are down here. Um, but, uh, and I remember Rodney Dangerfield, the first day I got there, he's sitting down in a crate and... Uh, and I come in with my with the boobs on the head. His the whole thing about his character is he wanted to have sex with my head. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I, I never met I never met him before. I said, "Hey, Ronnie, how you doing, Kevin?" He goes, "All right." He says, "I said, how you doing?" He goes, eh, "I'm coughing up blood now." Oh, oh, oh my he blamed gosh. it on the mold in his uh, uh, apartment. Damn. He passed away not too long after that, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, from mold. But his head is <laughs> no, frozen. The mold. Is he want to return the favor? The That's... mold. The mold got him. Listen, yeah. Kevin Nealon is at Helium Comedy Club. He's there tonight from se uh, seven to nine fifteen. Tomorrow also seven to nine fifteen. Two shows. Yeah. Uh, watch hiking with Kevin. Yeah. yeah. Also, you got that book. Uh, I, I exaggerate. exaggerate. My brushes with fame. Yeah. Yeah. And I got a couple movies coming out. Inhabitants. And yes, Mermaid. Inhabitants. There we go. Yeah. So I'm a busy guy. You're a busy guy. The great Underrated. Kevin Nealon. Thank you. Uh, hey. See that jacket over there? Yeah. See that, to, to is that see mine? The, no. Oh, five, uh, if you're back here five times. Oh, are you kidding me? That's jacket. a five-timer jacket. I Who's got the, the five-timers? It's Nikki Glaser it. and... Uh, uh, ben Bailey. Ben Bailey. And, Bailey. and uh, I think uh, Jim... Uh, Jim, uh, you know... Oh, um, from Vo metal. Voice sounds just like you, Florentine. Jim. Oh, Jim Florentine. Florentine, yeah, 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 Florentine yeah, yeah, has yeah. a jacket as well. No so, way. Two more times, Kevin. That's yours. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. Can I come back in an hour? Yes. <laughs> the great Kevin Nealon, everybody. All right, Thank we'll, you. We'll take one final break. We'll come back, wrap her up. All right, St. Louis, did you know that if you choose Hoppin Brothers for your home services this month, you're not just improving your home, you're also helping out our furry friends at Stray Rescue of St. Louis. That's right, Hoppin Brothers has partnered with Stray Rescue of St. Louis, and for every home service appointment during the month of March, they will contribute to supporting Stray Rescue's mission of rescuing and caring for stray animals in our community. Whether it's heating repairs or maintenance or installation, plumbing or electrical services, you could trust Hoppin Brothers to not only take care of your home, but also make a difference in the lives of animals in need. Hell, if you need your AC tuned up, now is the time to go Hoppin' Brothers. So make your home service appointment with Hoppin' Brothers today and join them in supporting Stray Rescue of St. Louis. Visit them online at hoffmanbros.com slash rescue. That's H-O-F-F-M-A-N-N-Bros.com slash rescue. Hoffman Brothers is an independent American standard heating and air conditioning dealer. Hoffmanbros.com slash rescue.
It's underneath one of it's them. Under it's under his a spare. left nipple. He's got a spare. The How dude's got that? a spare nipple. How do they know it's under there? You could see it. You can see through I'll the top nipple. What the hell no, are you no, about? he's got a nipple underneath the other. Oh, underneath. Underneath. So we, I thought you Not meant layers. Yeah. I thought you meant layers. Not behind. Okay. Like a spare nipple. He's like below. A spare nipple and below. A nipple oh, I see right below. And they're miniature. Have you ever seen mm. a third nipple on somebody? I got a friend with it. No, I've touch. seen a guy with a tail though. Oh wow. Oh, there it is, that. Kevin. That's his third nip. Oh, that's sexy. <laughs> Let me see that. He can nurse three babies at once. That's right. you know somebody with a tail? Areola. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't have an areola. Mm. Um, yeah, he had a tail. This guy I worked with, uh, my first job was dishwasher. And we used to change those white, you know, the white um, those outfits they gave you, uniforms, because mm -hmm. you get so dirty working in the kitchen and washing dishes and trash and all that. And we had a locker room where you change out of those clothes, put your other clothes back on, and he's changing once. And uh, I always try to look, you know, when guys are changing, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> and, uh, what? Just to see, just to see if they have tails. <laughs> cool, yeah. yeah, I'm looking for tails, man. I'm He's trying to get some tails. tails. <laughs> looking for tails. And yeah, he turned around and he had a tail. It wasn't a long tail. It was like a Doberman pincher. You know, after they like clipped it off. Oh, yeah, He's like been like yeah. yeah, but I guess some people have that. It's the extension of the, they have an extra, I don't know. Vertebrae or? Disc or something. Yeah. So it goes just, just above their crack a little bit. Mm. But you could grab onto it. Whoa, that's <laughs> wild. I found out. Yeah, you could grab you onto it and onto swing around. Yeah. Butt crack tail? Every time I took out a newspaper and folded it up, he got really nervous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He got excited and started waving. It, you always knew when it, it was quitting sweating. time. Do yeah. <laughs> you know who has webbed toes? Who? Dan Aykroyd. <gasps> For real? Yeah. Really? Like yeah. pronounced webbed? webbed? I think so. Yeah. I've never Can seen this. Can he spread his toes very far? Nobody's a good swimmer. I was going to say, yeah. he's had to yeah. have won some high school medals. Way to go. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of like celebrities out there that have kind of odd... Um, you know, things happening with them. I'll tell you what, man. If I was walking around this planet with web feet, I'd probably believe in some of the stuff that Ackroyd believes in, too. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably you, you right. You know what I mean? I'd be yeah. like, I ain't from here. Yeah. <laughs> so, so somebody dropped me off yeah, <laughs> on may, this yeah, planet. Yeah, he may actually be th yeah, thinking he's from another planet. Well, uh, wouldn't you? If you're walking around with a kid with, with yeah. duck feet, I would definitely think something is up. Something I am special. Uh, there's something you got to be on the swim team, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, you, you have gotta to be. be. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it's got to be. It's, those are all, would you call those... Um, Physical abnormalities, abnormalities like handicap kind of stuff. No or? way, advancements, physical advancements, physical yes. advancements, mutations, bodily yeah. attributes. Yeah, you know how they say uh, if you have any, uh, if you need uh, assistance getting on a plane, you know, they board you first. Yeah, I had knee surgery a while ago and I had a cane, and man, it was so great because they would put you on that plane right away. They give you all the time you want, and I started thinking. Well, I started thinking. Maybe I should just bring this cane with me always. Yeah, you know, even I would. When I'm healed, yeah, you know. Yeah, I was thinking about a wheelchair. That could be too cumbersome. You know what I mean? Did you have a handicap placard in your car? I should have got Dude, one of those. I should have. Come on, man. You they should have offered it. Yeah. Um, Do that, Lori Laughlin uh, gal and curb your enthusiasm in the in the new. In the new, I haven't seen the new episode. On the new season, like that's what she does. She takes advantage of every one of those. She's got the blue flag on her uh, golf cart thing. She's got the placard, the handicap placard on her, that's on her funny. car. I heard she's really leaning in. Leans the, in like, hard, leaning into dude. The, uh, admission scandal. Ta thing. Yes, taking Good advantage of everything. It's a, it's yeah, a great, Becky. it's a great scene. That's the that way they can't make fun of you because you're making fun of yourself. Yep, yep. She is right. Even with when Michael right. Richards was on Curb, oh, was he on? I didn't you, see that one. You were on Curb. I was on. And you I haven't was? seen all the episodes? <laughs> I haven't seen all the episodes. No. My friend Cheryl Hines is on that show. They did the Seinfeld reunion. She's great. And they really did did lean into the Kramer issue, Michael no Richards way. issue. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's wild. You remember that, Rafe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, vaguely, but yes. It was on Curb. Yeah. They did the Seinfeld thing on Curb. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, he hasn't worked uh, in a long time since then, right? Mm -hmm. No, but he's got that Seinfeld money. He don't need to work. Yeah, that's true. That's true. All you have to do is get a good hobby. <laughs> you got any hobbies? No. He doesn't. Do you know what I just started doing as a hobby? I'm learning how to uh, tie ropes, rope knots. Mm. Because my like father... Like a Boy Scout? Yeah, like a sailor. You know how to tie like a bow, <laughs> uh, like a bow line? I'm turning. I'm, I'm learning how to do that right now. Cinch knots and, you know, cliff... Uh, my father used to tie the luggage on a roof of the car, and he had the cinch knots and everything. I think, wow, this guy... He knows what he's doing, you know. And um, and just like a year ago, I got some books on tying rope knots. How exciting. Do you know? <laughs> no, it is. It soon is great. The show, soon the show is going to be repelling yeah. with Kevin Neal. <laughs> but when I'm on a plane, Escape. you know, when I take out like eight feet of rope, people get concerned. Sure. They see a piece of rope. 
with this guy that's got yeah. an airplane that just boarded uh, in front of everybody with a cane. It's I get the rope out. out. It's like I'm, male I'm, knitting, really. It is. It is, it is actually. I practice. I'm looking for a post. I usually do it around the neck of the person in front of me. Yes. You know, I just tie, try to get out of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's that's one of my hobbies. Damn. Well, the luggage thing's important, man. Nothing makes a dad. It excites the dad and everyone. And oh, a good pack. A good, a good pack. car pack. What yeah. do you hope? Oh, your That's brother. It. Yeah, I'm a good car pack. You get, you give me like 12 bags, I'll get them all in the trunk. Oh, yeah. I'll make the use of Is that all Adam, Sandler, Adam calling? Sandler calling you? Is the payphone going off? <laughs> hey, listen, I got a... Yeah, so I, that should have been... I got a Happy Madison production for you. This is not my phone. Bring your friends. Pick this up from somebody. It's actually his rope dealer. I don't know how. It says rope dealer. Yeah. 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 Got new rope. Hey man, drop my company. <laughs> <laughs> Just drop it. But this, I, I, I got all kinds of ropes. Um, I got nylon. I got twine. Yeah, I got it all. That is yeah. so hot. Hemp. Dude, this is cool. Man. Hemp yeah. rope. I got Hemp all rope. sorts. Of um, rope. Okay, so so during the writer strike, so I, I did read that you like started taking Spanish. Yeah. So during the writer's strike, when you had nothing to do, you started taking Spanish classes via Zoom with a language guy in, in Mexico City. A language City. gal in Mexico City, yeah. Alma. Uh, you started learning piano. Yeah. Uh, banjo. Well, I've always known how to play the banjo. Oh, but, you were always a banjo guy? But I started playing more of these instruments, guitar and banjo. So do you and Steve Martin jam? We have. You have? That's so we cool. Have. That's yeah. rad. Is that anywhere while. we could find online? Well, um, we are um, one episode of Weeds. We play the theme song together. Duh! You might, you might be able to dig it up here, but um, yeah. So we played the we played the band. He's so much better than me, though. I mean, I I get tired after three songs of bluegrass. I'm like, oh, enough already. Lauren, so show him that picture that you were getting excited about yesterday. Oh, of Steve Martin back in the day. Turquoise Steve Martin, Steve. like Steve Martin back in the. Was he was on the dating days? game. Steve Martin was. Yeah. Oh, and I was it. too. You were. Yeah, I won the date. This I was picture. Three. Steve Martin is just so oh, gorgeous. Yeah. Look at that necklace, and he's holding and, a banjo. And he's holding the banjo. Oh, you see the color version. Ugh. A lot of turquoise. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, That's when salt, you, pepper, he, and turquoise. He used to open up for a nitty-gritty dirt band. Yep. Really? Back then. So that was his hippie days. Oh, here's all right. Here's Kevin Nealon and uh, Steve Martin doing the theme to Weeds. There you go. Little boxes oh. on the hillside. Little, little boxes made of ticky-tacky. <laughs> little boxes on the hillside. <laughs> little boxes. That's great. <laughs> That's both of you guys? Yeah. So the banjo is nothing new for you. It says here that no. you started it like during the deliverance yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, people ask me what made me want to take out the banjo, and I, I had been playing the guitar, and I saw that movie Deliverance, and they start laughing, but it was really true. When that scene came on, when the, they was playing the banjo on the porch, yeah. and they were playing the guitar, it really got me going and moving me. I thought, that is amazing, that, that weird instrument. weird-looking kid playing the banjo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, uh, that got you inspired? I be well, I mean, if he do could you do know, it. Do you know how that scene was shot? No. This kid was real, of course. He wasn't yeah. an actor, mm -hmm. and he had, uh, you know, he was mentally handicapped, and they, he didn't play the banjo, so they put a banjo on his lap, and they hid his arm behind his back, <clears throat> and another banjo player put his hands through the wall. No way. And was what? doing the, playing the banjo. Whoa. That's what that I heard. That's so cool. Hmm. Now, maybe if I go back and look at... Go look at that. I thought he was on a swing. I gotta go back and look at that. He was on the porch. Maybe he was a very small banjo player behind him. Yeah, it was, was he in a rocking chair? If I <laughs> Maybe he was in a rocking chair. If I, if I recall, dude, that, when was the last time you saw that movie? Uh, not too dude. long ago. I went on a whitewater rafting trip in Georgia, and yeah. that was a... Uh, Were you compromised? No, but they, they advertised... The guide talked about it a lot. He go, the advertisement was, The River from Deliverance. And I was <laughs> oh, yeah. like, yeah, I don't know if that's a good selling point. Like, I don't think anybody remembers the intense rafting scene no. from Deliverance, you know. But it was... They were really... They leaned in hard. The river... Uh, They're like, the love scene from Deliverance happened right up here in this <laughs> woods. And I was like, this is weird. <laughs> Okay, so the scene just shows his face. And yeah, you his, might be right. And then his hands. Here, so, yeah, that's probably a fake hand. 
But you see, he's not playing it, though. Did you see the documentary on Burt Reynolds? Okay. No. Oh, it's so good. It's, good. it's so good. He just could not keep his money. He would just. He had like 15 ex wives. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, look at this. You, uh, you can. Now that. Now, Those I won't be able to arms. unsee this. Yeah, you can tell because it just shows him. Well, well, I don't know how they swing. had somebody's hand coming through the wall. No, because his head looks like it's behind the swing. Oh, right here. Yeah, like he's sitting behind it, right? Yeah, he's not playing it. Dude, Deliverance. Have you have wow. you seen the whole movie? Uh, yeah, it's, it's been it's been too many years. I've never Learn, have you seen it? it? No. That's on. The, that's put that on the list. It's that good. is intense. Yeah. It's intense. Watch that after Deer Hunter. Yeah, I got so many man uh, yeah. movies lined up that I gotta watch. <laughs> make, a, make a night of it. Yeah, I just yeah. fun one. I just watched uh, Poor Things on the Plane yesterday. Oh, that I'm gonna watch that tonight. Crazy. I'm watching that tonight. That is sick. This, this, <laughs> it's uh, crazy. Is it good? Is it's it worth, really is it worth good. a watch? Good. Am yeah. I going to be depressed after watching it? No. Okay. Good. No. Is it funny? It is. Uh, it does have funny parts to it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. It's just. It's just so weird. It's just. I can't even explain it. It's a little bit like Frankenstein. You're right. It's, That's what the trailer looks like. Yeah. It's a little bit of like Big. You know when he? Uh, well, actually, it's the reverse of Big. I don't want to give it away. All right. Well, yeah, she, yeah. she, the, the snaps is like she, she dies and then she's brought back to life. It's like I the exorcist, you know, it's like, uh, it's like, um, <laughs> it's like the little mermaid. <laughs> it's like, uh, all right. it's like, <laughs> all right. it's a wonderful line. Like Super and Mario Shawshank. Brothers. Shawshank. So yeah. we had, we had, uh, earlier in our, you know, celebrity news segment, uh, the, a list of the, uh, the best Kevin Nealon roles, mm -hmm. uh, TV and, Movies. A top nine. A did top it say nine. I was the most underrated actor? On your own list? Yeah. <laughs> it did. No, what do you think was listed as your number one... Movie? Mo in movie or TV role? Just character, yeah. Character. Oh, character. Doug Wilson. Weeds? No. Mm -mm. No? That was three, I think. Um, that was, was it, number two. That was, two. was it drunk number two from Roxanne? <laughs> no, no. Are you from Roxanne? Yeah, yeah. Dang. I was in the beginning. Dude, No, nobody knows that movie. Drunk number two. Cyrano de Bergerac, dude. Yep. Dude, that's a great movie. That's it was like great. A lot of comics were Highly there. underrated Steve Martin movie. Yeah. Very much so. And the guy that played Slider in Navy Seals. Was that Daryl Hannah? Waiting for that guy Daryl Hannah. to take off. <laughs> yeah. Daryl Hannah. That was great. We I was up in uh, British Columbia at this ski resort town in the middle of nowhere in the summer. And they're waiting for the right... I was in the beginning of the movie with a ski pole. I was dueling with Steve Martin. He had mm -hmm. a tennis racket. And it was me and Rich Scheidner, this other comic. We waited for three weeks to do that scene because of weather or whatever the timing was with the show, and we just rented bikes. We had such a blast up there. I'll always remember that. That was cool. No, that was that was not listed as your number one. Okay. So, so, in, include SNL in it, too. Okay. Uh, was it Mr. Subliminal? Nope. Was that it was number five. That was number five. Oh. <laughs> uh, God, I don't know. It's Franz. Oh, I was going to say Hans and Franz. Franz yeah. is your number one, according to this, whoever made this list. That's yeah. sad. That's How's so that sad? sad? <laughs> yeah, because it's not me. It's a character. Yeah, but you're playing the character. I mean, you do such a great job at it. And, and, and I did encourage everybody earlier to go listen to the Conan O'Brien podcast where you and Dana Carvey do yeah. read the movie. Right. You right. were number two. <laughs> was, weekend update host. Oh, yeah. oh, really? So Kevin Nealon no. was number two. Yeah. And also yourself in Curb, too. So you're on the list twice. You made yourself as yourself twice. In this Larry list. Sanders. You ever see that one? I have. Larry Sanders. That didn't make the list. Yeah. It's just top nine. It's just top nine. It was just did. top nine. Not even, a, you didn't get a top ten. You got a top nine. A top nine yeah, list. Man. I'll take it, man. I'll <laughs> take Number it. ten is your next one. It will be. I have three films that are coming out, and I only know the name of this one, Mermaid. It's called Mermaid. We shot in Florida. It's a thriller. The Mermaid is kind of like a killer. It's a, it's a, it's a horror film. Oh. And she kind of looks like an alien in the face, and she just comes up on boats and kills people. Oh, that's oh, it. And, sweet. Uh, it's got a little bit of an E.T. thing going on there, too, because they take her, and you know the guy keeps her drugged up and brings her to parties and stuff. All right, so Whoa. that uplifter's coming up. Uh, what else? E.T. There's another one, and I'm trying to remember the name of this one. Inhabitants. Inhabitants. That's it, yeah. yeah. That's another horror film, I think. You got two yeah. horror movies uh -huh. in there? I think it is, yeah. And I did another one, I think... But I can't, I have no recollection. <laughs> it's not that good. Yeah, I, you know, it's a little indie film. And they bring me in for a couple of scenes, you know, and then I'm out of there. Yeah. Uh, there was one called Grand Rapids that I never saw. 
Uh, I used to do these uh, indie films when I was starting out because, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're easier to get in a role because they were very low budget. And I, I would do them because I think this is the director's first time. He could become a very big director. Sure. You know, he maybe he's really good. And you know what? Never happens. <laughs> uh, most of the time I never hear the film again. <laughs> So, um, but I think this mermaid one will be good. And also the, what's it called? Inhabitants. 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 Yeah, won, that's the one you won down in Austin Film Festival. That one. Good he knew that. I know. <laughs> he knew that. Is it weird being on a horror movie set compared to a comedy movie set? What's the vibe like? Um, I think with the comedy, uh, it's, it's a lot more um, present. You know, with, with the horror movies, it's a lot of like special effects. Mm -hmm. And, you know, getting the lighting right and uh, a lot of running and screaming. <laughs> right. Yeah. A lot of running and screaming, falling. <laughs> falling, getting back up again, running yeah, more. Corn syrup, you know, corn syrup blood. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, you know, when you do a Sandler movie, it's with your buddies. I'm sure. And, oh, that's I'm the sure best. Yeah, that's the best. Yeah, I did like maybe 12 Sandler films. And then uh, I, I thought, well, maybe that's enough to do. You know, I don't want to get typecast. Or, <laughs> you know, it's like the 12. silly person in What's there. What's your you favorite know? one? Favorite Sandler movie that you were on? Um, probably Happy Gilmore. Oh. Yeah, Gary Potter. That's how, that's, I, that's how I end the sports segment every time. Yeah. He's doing the bull dance, feeling the flow. Feeling the flow. That's how he out. ends every sports wow. segment. Mm -hmm. with there, was a, there, there was a script sent to me uh, that, now this is when I decided I was not doing any more Sandler films. <laughs> they sent me this film that he wasn't even in. He was producing it. It was called um, Grandma's Boy. Oh, oh yeah. dude. And that's not, on your, that's not even on the list of your top roles, oh, dude. Really? Wow. Travesty. Travesty for sure. Underrated. So I'm, I'm looking, I read the script, I'm like, nah, okay, this is nuts. It's crass, it's sophomoric, juvenile, exactly what I don't want to do anymore. <laughs> the next day I get a call. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. But Alan's the lead. Uh, I get a call from Sandler the next day. Neil, I really hope you do this movie because, you know, if you don't do it and it's a big hit, I'll feel bad. But if it's not a big hit, no one's going to see it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, "All right, you're right. I'll do it then." You convinced me. Um, so yeah, so and it never, it didn't become a hit at the time, but then it became a cult classic. Yeah, and now everybody loves that. You know, that's one of those movies I wanted to show my son, and I forgot. I hadn't seen it in a while. Yeah. So my son's 14. Okay. Maybe 15. <laughs> I forgot how dirty it was. Oh yeah. Super dirty. And I'm like, "All right, boy, I'm gonna watch <laughs> one of my it. favorites, Grandma's Boy," and. I'm like, oh God! What have, I, what have I done? It was the dirtiest one to well, date. Too. The dirtiest one. I know it, man. I'm the same way. I have a 17 year old, and I, I wouldn't let him watch a lot of that stuff. You know, even if there was swearing, and I go, I cringe. I go, oh, you didn't hear that. You didn't hear that. I did weeds for eight years. Never let my parents watch it. Oh, you never let your parents they watch never it. Never saw it. They never saw it. And now I kind of regret that. But there was a lot of harsh scenes in there. Yeah. You know, with me especially, and so I don't know. I didn't want them to look at me in a different light. Mm. Listen, even Kevin Nealon didn't want to make his parents feel uncomfortable around him. That's no, that's true. And yet, it happened several times. Well, one time especially, I was in SNL, and they were sitting right in the front row, and I was in a sketch called The Narcoleptic uh, Stripper. <laughs> so I had to, I had these cutoff shorts on and a tank top and a, a mullet wig and I had with a headband, and I had to dance right in front of them, like, you know, sticking oh my, my yeah, 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 thrusting yeah. and stuff. I was so humiliated and scared. <laughs> <laughs> and aroused. But you know what? I got $5 in tips from them. That's yeah. nice. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Nice. That's nice. Now, Lauren wanted to know about your little Nikki role uh, with the boobs I, on your head. I love little Nikki so much. The soundtrack to that movie is incredible, and I absolutely love that you had breasts on your head. So whose idea was that? Oh, that was Sandler's idea, and a buddy he wrote it with, Tim Hurley. You know, the funny thing about that movie is, um, I think it was that movie. Sandler calls me and says, hey, Neely, you want to go down to this, uh, this, um, this resort down by San Diego? It's, you know, it's to get you in shape and stuff, because he had the movie coming up, you want to get in shape. And, you know, it's, um, it kind of, it's not a fat farm, but it's, you know, they serve you good <laughs> meals and stuff. Right. And, you know, you exercise, you get up at five, you hike. I said, sure, <laughs> let's do it. Fat farm. <laughs> <laughs> so we drive down there. He's driving and we stop in uh, Oceanside or Ocean City, whatever the one is on the uh, West Coast. And we have this meal. He has the biggest meal I've ever seen because he realizes it'll be his last <laughs> yeah, meal yeah, yeah. before he goes in there. And, uh, and then the whole time he's in his room looking at costumes and, you know, doing production stuff. And, uh, and I went out and did the exercise. <laughs> I think I lost 10 pounds. Oh, nice. But, um, yeah, so little Nikki 
was uh, I think the big controversy was that is the voice he did mm. in it, you know, talking yeah. the way he did. Right. And mm. the, I don't think the um, the company wanted him to do that voice, the, the production company. I mean, the studio. But anyway, it was, he, like, it was like this. Yeah, talking yeah. outside of his Get in the flash. It was so cute. Yeah, I, I mean, I, th- I thought it worked great. And so I played Tidhead, the gatekeeper of hell. Yeah. And I had these two breasts. <laughs> they, I'm telling you, right? The breasts look so real. They, they did. did, dude. They did. And they felt real, too, I would imagine. <laughs> and so um, everybody on the on the crew, they wanted to feel my breasts because they had water balloons in them yeah, and they yeah. jiggled, you know. And there would be a line sometimes. People wanted to just feel. And often I'd have to say, excuse me, my eyes are down here. Okay? Right, yeah. <laughs> my eyes are down here. Um, but, uh, and I remember Rodney Dangerfield, the first day I got there, he's sitting down in a crate. And uh, and I come in with my <laughs> with the boobs on the head. His, the whole thing about his character is he wanted to have sex with my head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so I, and I, never met, I never met him before. I said, hey, Rodney, how you doing, Kevin? He goes, all right. He said, I said, how you doing? He goes, eh, I'm coughing up blood now. Oh, oh my God. He blamed gosh. it on the mold in his uh, uh, apartment. Damn. He passed away not too long after that, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, from mold. But his head is <laughs> no, frozen. No. The mold, is you really? want to return the favor. The That's... mold The mold got him. Listen, yeah. Kevin Nealon is at Helium Comedy Club. He's there tonight from se- uh, 7 to nine fifteen. Tomorrow, also 7 to nine fifteen. Two shows, yeah. Uh, watch Hiking with Kevin. Yeah, yeah. Also, you got that book, uh, I, I Exaggerate Exaggerate. My Brushes with Fame. Yeah, yeah. And I got a couple movies coming out. Inhabitants and yes, Mermaid. Inhabitants. There we go. Yeah. So I'm a busy guy. You're a busy guy. The great Underrated. Kevin Nealon. Thank you. Uh, hey, see that jacket over there? Yeah. See that, see, Is that secret? mine? No. Oh, five, oh, if you're back here five times. No, oh, are you kidding time me? That's jacket. a five-timer jacket. I Who's got the, the five timers? It's Nikki Glazer it. and uh, uh, Ben Bailey. Ben Bailey. Ben Bailey. And uh, I think uh, Jim, uh, Jim, uh, you know. Oh, um, from Vo- Voice sounds just like you, Florentine. Jim. Oh, Jim Florentine. Yeah, Florentine, yeah, 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 Florentine yeah, yeah, yeah. has a jacket as well. No so. way. Two more times, Kevin. That's yours. Oh my God. Thank you so much. Can I come back in an hour? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Nealon, everybody. Right, Thank we'll, you. We'll take one final break. We'll come back, wrap her up.